Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to go over some of the origin, insertion, and action of some of the muscles in the lower extremity. And we're also going to uh, cover some of the ligaments that are found in the hip. And, um, but before we like go into the attachments of all the different muscles, the first thing that we need to review is we need to know the different uh, movements that occurs at these types of joints and the types of joints that are found. This model here, what type of joint is this? The hip joint where it, the femur sits on the inside of the acetabulum. What type of joint is that? It's a ball and socket. So you have a, a ball and a socket joint and then if I get this like model here what type of joint is found here? What is that? What would that be similar to in the upper extremity? To the elbow. Yeah, to the elbow. So this is a, a hinge joint as well. This is a hinge joint. And so um, here at the ankle, we also have what's known as a, a hinge joint because we're having uh, similar movements here. So some of the movements of each of these different types of joints. So for the ball in the socket, you have hip flexion. So that would be bringing it upwards. So this is hip flexion. And so then when you come back down this way, what would that be? Hip extension. extension. Yeah, so you have hip flexion, hip extension. And then if you bring it to the side away from midline, what is that? Yeah, so abduction is away from midline, adduction is towards midline. Uh, we also have, so we did flexion, extension, abduction, and adduction, and then you also have uh, rotation. So you have the medial rotation of the femur, and then you also have uh, lateral rotation of it, so moving in this direction. Okay, so then we'll move into the knee joint. So what would... Um, so what would this be? So going from here to here, knee extension. So you have knee extension, and then this would be knee flexion. So then if we go down here at the ankle, so if you go in this direction, this is plantar flexion, and then bringing it back upwards is dorsiflexion because you're flexing the dorsum of the foot the bottom is known as the plantar surface. So that's why we call it plantar flexion and then dorsiflexion. Um, the two other movements here, so you have the inversion and then eversion. So inversion is when the gap is larger here on the inside and then eversion is whenever the gap is more towards um, the outside. Okay, so those are uh, some of the, the different movements. And so just by Knowing the types of joints, knowing the movements that occur, knowing the bony landmarks where the muscles attach, this will help us to describe the action of the muscle, as in what it is that the muscle does. Because if a muscle is typically in the front, it's a flexor. If it's in the back, it's typically an extensor. If it's to the side, it'll do abduction. If it's more uh, medial, it's typically adduction. Okay, there's always like some variations, but this is a good um, rule of thumb. If it crosses the joint, would it move the joint? Yeah, if it crosses the joint, it's going to help to move it. And so you'll see what I mean once we start going through uh, some of these um, different bony landmarks. But let me um, go over these ligaments real quick in the hip, and then we'll talk about the origin insertions. Okay, so this is um, fairly simple. The names of the ligaments are just based off of the region of where it's at. Okay, so uh, if you look at it here, so um, this is the pubic region. So this is the pubofemoral, which goes here to the femur. And then this part is known as the ischio. Um, this is, I'm sorry, this is the iliofemoral because this is the where the ilium is of pelvis. And then on the back side, this is where the ischio femoral, because 
this is where the ischium is. If you remember where the ischial tuberosity is, it's right here where my pinky is pointing at. Okay, so now let's move on to origin and insertion. So starting here at the top, let's go over some of the, the hip flexors. So this bony landmark is known as the anterior superior iliac spine. For short, we just say it's the ASIS. So then the one, the bony landmark below would be the AIIS, the anterior inferior iliac spine. Okay, so the muscle that starts here and travels all the way down to the tibia, to the proximal medial tibia. So you identified that in lab today on the leg model. So that is the sartorius. It's kind of shaped like an S. So it goes down and it inserts here. You also have one of the four quad muscles, which is known as the rectus femoris. So the rectus femoris is found here where the AIIS is. And then it travels down to the um, tib tibial tuberosity. Okay, so then we have these two and another, the, the main uh, hip flexor, the primary hip flexor, is what's known as the iliopsoas. So the iliopsoas is the convergence of the iliacus, which is found on the anterior iliac fossa, and it also comes off of the transverse processes of the lumbar vertebra. So the psoas major comes from the transverse processes, the iliacus comes from here, and then they'll both merge together and then they'll attach here at what's known as the lesser trochanter. And so all of these muscles that I just talked about, they all cross the hip joint. And so if you think about where they start and where they end, think about the muscle shortening and contracting. What is the direction? All of those muscles are in the front. What is the direction that they're going to bring the hip? Flexion or extension? This is kind of like, yeah, flexion. Right, because they're all here, they go down this way, so when the muscle shortens, they'll bring the hip up. So if like you're running up the stairs, right, you have to use your hip flexors to elevate and bring your, your leg up so you can go to the next step. So these are the muscles that are gonna help to do that. Okay. So then um, we also have what's known as our hip extensors, so things that extend the hip, bringing it backwards. So the one that primarily extends the hip is the gluteus maximus. So it's found here on the posterior um, iliac fossa, and then it'll insert at the gluteal tuberosity. So that's back here on the back side of it. So you have the glute max as well as the hamstring muscles. So the hamstrings are found they originate here on the ischial tuberosity, but there are, so there's three main types, but, so you have, it depends how you think about it. So you have lateral hamstrings and medial hamstrings. So for the lateral hamstrings, you have the bicep femoris, you have the long head and the short head. For the medial hamstrings, you have the semi-group. So you have the semi-membranosus and the semi-tendinosus. So, the long head of the biceps femoris, it originates here, but then it'll insert here on the lateral side, right, because it's a lateral hamstring, and it attaches at the fibular head. So then the other two, so the, um, the tendinosus goes from the ischial tuberosity, and then it travels all the way down here to the proximal medial tibia. So then the last one is the semi membranosus, which will go here, and then it'll insert here on the medial uh, condyle of the tibia. So all of these muscles, they help to extend the hip, right? Think about it shortening, bringing it backwards. But then I said that the hamstrings, they attach below here, right? So what will happen not only do they do hip flexion, they also, or hip extension, they also 
flex the knee. Right? So think about like at the gym doing people doing like hamstring curls. There's like a machine they'll like lay flat and then they'll like bring it back this way, right? So they're working out the hamstrings. Um, there's also a machine where you like sit on it and then you'll just kick your knee out. And so that's extension of the knee. So what mu group of muscles are we targeting for extension? Those, yeah, the quads. Yeah, so we're targeting the quads for extension. And then if you're laying flat, like on your stomach, then you'll do um, knee flexion and target the hamstrings. Okay. So we did hip flexors. We talked about uh, hip extensors. So now let's talk about um, the abductors, the abductors, which move away from midline. So uh, one of them is known as the uh, TFL, the tensor fascia latte, or latte, or yeah, latte. And so it'll start, it's here on the ASIS as well as part of the anterior iliac crest. And so it kind of goes to, or it goes to the IT band. So let me show you on the leg model real quick. So this here, so this is the TFL, and this is where it's inserting here on the IT band, okay? So it's going to the IT band, and then you also have, okay, so, so then you also have the glute medius. So the gluteus uh, medius, it also helps to abduct abduct the hip. Okay, so now that we do the abductors, let's do the adductors. So this is moving it towards midline. So all of these muscles, they attach primarily on this region. Okay, so starting at the top here. So at the superior pubic ramus is the pectineus. So the pectineus We'll go from here and then it'll insert on the back side. So this is the proximal medial femur to the linea aspera. And then, so that's the pectineus. And then you also have the adductor groups of muscles. So you have adductor magnus, adductor longus, and brevis. And they're all pretty much found in this particular region. So where the, um, the pubic ramus is, as well as the ischial uh, ramus, and then the body of the pubis. So they'll start here, the adductors, and then they'll insert on the adductor tubercle. There's a couple other attachment sites for them, but we're just gonna stick with the adductor tubercle because it says it in the name. We're trying to keep it, keep it simple. So those are for the adductors, and then the last one that you also have is the gracilis. So the gracilis is found on uh, so the inferior uh, pubic ramus, and that's what goes to the proximal medial tibia. So the gracilis is like the most medial muscle. So if you've, if you've caught on, there are three muscles that attach here at the proximal medial tibia. So just remember SGT, the sartorius, the gracilis, and the semitendinosus, which is uh, one of the medial, ham medial hamstrings. Okay, so that's the muscles for uh, for the hip, uh, we also have what's known as our lateral hip rotators. And so uh, one of the main ones is what's known as the piriformis. And so, but what I want to point out is that all of the lateral hip rotators are going to attach here on the greater trochanter. So for instance, the piriformis, it goes from the anterior sacrum and then it'll attach here on the greater trochanter. So let me show you like what what it looks like on this model. So if I just take the glute max off, all of these here, these are all the lateral hip rotators right there. So uh, if you see people like sitting in this position here, you right, see so some people like cross their legs like this, they're using their lateral hip um, rotators in this, or kind of like this position, right, kind of like this. So you're using your um, lateral hip rotators. So now let's move on from the hip uh, and go a little bit uh, lower here. 
So the first one that we'll talk about is the uh, tibialis anterior. So the tibialis anterior is found, um, so it's going to start here at the lateral uh, condyle of the tibia, and then it'll insert on the medial cuneiform. So you have the tibialis anterior. So if it goes from here and then it crosses the ankle joint, what is going to be the action of the muscle? Is it going to bring the ankle up or is it going to bring it down? Up. Right, it's going to bring it up in this direction. And so what is this action called? Dorsiflexion. Yeah, so this is dorsiflexion and this is plantar flexion. So you also have the extensor digitorum, which is found at a similar location here on the, the lateral condyle. So they'll go here and then, but they're going to insert on the phalanges. So therefore, if it's the extensor digitorum, they're extending the digits. So they'll help to bring the toes upwards. Okay. So extensor digitorum, the tibialis anterior. Uh, let's go over um, the soleus and the gastrocnemius. So the gastrocnemius, uh, both of them are found on the condyles. And so, so this is medial. So the medial head of the gastroc would be here. The lateral uh, head of the gastroc would be found here. And so both, th both of them will insert on the calcaneus, but uh, it, it goes through, through a tendon, um, the calcaneal tendon for it to attach there. But then the soleus is inferior, it's below it, and so the soleus is found here. So it's on the posterior side of the tibia, but it has the same insertion there. But um, the difference between the two is that, so if you're doing like a standing calf raise, you're, you, you're targeting the gastroc, but if you're doing like a seated calf raise, you're isolating the soleus because the soleus is found below the joint itself. The gastroc is above the knee joint. Okay. So um, I've talked about the biceps. So extensor, the soleus, tibialis posterior, uh, the gastrocnemius. Okay, so. So that'll do it for this lecture. Are there any questions?